The next thing I'd like to check is the audio output transformer. This is the GA80 from uh, um, Gibson. And from the information that I gathered from them, the winding ratio was supposed to be uh, 27 and a half to one. So while I did test this, um, the input and output, uh, the primary and secondary windings of this coil I with a continuity tester, I wanted to make sure that everything was running right by being able to replicate the ratio that was in the documentation. So what I've done is I have a uh, AC multimeter right here, and this is reading the secondary winding, which is zero, it's just a little bit off. And this one is reading the primary winding. And I'm going to use this uh, signal generator to generate uh, this AC waveform. And by looking at the AC waveform, we're gonna check, first of all, if it's linear, which we would expect that, that the ratio between this one and this one would be the same. And we're also gonna check based on that ratio what the uh, uh, winding ratio is, right? So right now I have it off. And one of the reasons I'm doing this primary concern was this particular capacitor. This isn't the one that burned, believe it or not. The, the fire shot through this one over here, this pinhole and then took out this capacitor with it. So I always have a concern about these uh, um, transformers. So let's get started. We're gonna bump up the voltage till we get to an eighth of a volt here, 0.125, right? So we're gonna bump this up to 0.125 and then we're gonna look at the output right here. So let's go ahead and start cranking this up. Then we have an eighth of a volt. And if we look at the other side, we'll see that we see uh, around 3.4 volts, 3.4 volts on the output. So I'll record those. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this to a quarter of a volt and we should see about 6.8 on this side. So let's do that now. So now I have a quarter of a volt, and we see that it did double. It went, went from 3.44 to 6.88. And by taking those values, and I have some, some other values that I, that I rounded before, you could see they're just about the same right there. What I ended up with was by multiplying a quarter by four to get one, and then obviously 6.88 by four, I ended up with one to 27.5. And as it turns out from the information provided, it is in fact 27.5. So now that we have that information, knowing that the speaker uh, is measured at 3.5 ohms in and around, I used resistance to measure it, obviously it's gonna be off slightly, right? But just to get a ballpark here, what I did was, is I took the, uh, the Z, which is the ratio squared, right? 27.5 times 27.5, and I ended up with 756.25. I then multiplied that by the speaker resistance and ended up with 2,647 ohms. If you look at the recommended values for the plate resistance for a 6V6, you will find that it is 5,000 ohms. However, because this one is a single-ended class A with two 6V6s, we go and double that value. So 2647 becomes roughly around 5,000 ohms, which is exactly what we're looking for to drive this amplifier in this configuration. So we're gonna say that that is good.